Bienvenue à Nice! Star Legend on Windstar Cruises. We're here on their Winter in the Med Cruise and uh, Nice is our second stop. I'm just walking around in France vlogging. People are staring at me already. This is our first time in Nice. I'm so excited. We're here overnight, which is a great perk of Windstar. They do overnights in quite a few of their ports. So we have plenty of time to check out this beautiful little city in the French Riviera. So if you're here on a port stop or you're just here in Nice for a brief period of time, I hope this video gives you some ideas. And if you are in a Mediterranean cruise, stopping in Cannes or in Marseille, I have some other videos of things to do in those cities. So make sure to check the description box if you're interested in those. And let's go explore Nice. Our first order of business on our Nice visit was to head up to the medieval village of Ez, which is about a 20-ish minute taxi ride up into the mountains along the coast. You can also take the train and then take a bus, but a cab just seemed like a much easier option. Our cab driver dropped us off right in front of Fragonard, which is one of the oldest perfumeries in the Côte d'Azur. So this area of France is really famous for being an area where they create a lot of perfume. So Fragonard is a pretty established uh, perfume brand and they have a factory here you can go in and take a tour so we figured might as well pop in and uh, learn all about how perfume is made Inside of this old alambic we have some traits and uh, for example for the rose of grass we use this method and uh, we only use the petals the petals they go inside they are heated with steam and the steam carries the fragrant molecule from the flower, from the rose. So we have a combination of essence and also steam. In the beginning of the tour, they challenge you to try to match the scents with the flower they come from. Why was what? Lavender. <laughs> oh, one is... I'm gonna go with mimosa flower because I don't know what that smells like and that's something I've never smelled before. I don't have a good nose, but I think that's jasmine. Okay, I have a bad nose. It's it's a known fact. A perfumer or a nose has to be both a chemist and an artist at the same time. A very nice, special nose and a very good memory also. So we call it the olfactory memory because it needs to memorize what you see over there, what we call the organ of a nose, like an instrument, 2,000 different designs. The tour we went on was free, but you can also book a workshop where they walk you through how to make your own perfume. These workshops start at 29 euros and they go up in price from there. The main Fragonard factory is in Grasse, which is not too far away. Here they make a lot more soaps and other toiletries, but they do have a gift shop where you can purchase their full line of perfumes as well as different bath soaps. Tour's over. Now we're going to buy, begin the very steep descent to the village. Ascent. 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 You said descent. Oh. Okay. Oh God, I'm tired. <laughs> the small medieval village of Ez, perched high above the coast, is famous for its beauty and charm. Ez was first populated around 2000 BC as a commune situated near Mount Bastide, and by 1388, Ez fell under the jurisdiction of the House of Savoy, who built up the town as a fortified stronghold because of its proximity to Nice. It is steep. It's time to get that cardio in for the day. Be prepared when you come to Ez. The walk up is very steep and the pathway is often cobblestones and uneven, so you definitely want some good shoes and be prepared for a little bit of a workout. Ez is well known for its beauty and charm. Its many shops, art galleries, hotels, and restaurants attract a large number of tourists. 
but as a result, Ed has become dubbed a museum village as few residents of local origin live here. And unfortunately, in early December, most of the village seemed to be shut down for the season. Oh, it's, it's so quiet. It's kind of eerie. Got the window. Bye, <laughs> There goes the fair with a stray like always. Same old bread and rest itself. It's wild. So this is someone's private entrance to that door right there. But like how much you would have to crouch to get through that doorway. <laughs> wow. It was definitely a bummer that most things seemed to be closed when we were there. I could definitely see how in the summertime when the galleries and restaurants and shops are open, how this would be such a fun place to come and visit. Even though everything was closed, it was still really cool to get to come up here and walk around and just take in this quaint little village. So in my opinion, it's still worth a little trip up here just to see it if you're in the area. Thing that you can do that's open in S in the winter time. The exotic garden. A lot of like cacti and succulents here and the view is absolutely incredible as well. The best views to be had in Ez are definitely from the exotic gardens. Here you can wander along the pathways and admire many different varieties of cacti, succulents, and Mediterranean plants while taking in the epic coastline. And a little Resting point. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Scattered throughout the garden, you'll find beautiful statues by the artist Jean-Philippe Richard, which are such a nice accent to all the plants here. At the very top of the gardens are the ruins of a medieval fortress, and from here you can see for miles around. It's truly spectacular. Make sure to take a peek inside Our Lady of the Assumption, which was built on the ruins of a 12th century church. This neoclassical 18th century church has definitely seen better days, but it seemed like they were actively in the process of a huge restoration project. Since there really wasn't much to be done in the village of Ez, as lots of things were closed, we decided to head back down and explore Nice. We took a bus back into the city center, which was super simple and easy to do, and Nice definitely has a very easy to navigate public transportation system. Our stomachs led us into La Garibaldi, which is in Garibaldi Square, and it was a really chic, cozy, and modern place to grab some lunch. I was definitely starving after all that climbing around as. Here in Garibaldi Square, you can people watch, enjoy the shade of the trees, eat in one of the many bars or restaurants, or you can visit one of Nice's many museums, the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art. Actually, fun fact, Nice has the most amount of museums in a French city per capita outside of Paris, and they do have a pass if you're gonna be here for multiple days where you can see most of the museums for a really great price. We decided to head into the old town of Nice to just do some shopping, but also to check out one of their museums, which is Palais Lascaris. I hope I'm saying that right. This used to be the home of an aristocratic family here in Nice, and now it is a museum. It's a really great example of sort of Baroque interior, but also they have such an incredible collection of rare instruments in this museum. What do you mean? So like there would be poles. 
going through these. And someone would sit in here, and then there would be people who would stand on either side of the place oh, and carry, carry them. them. So it would take four people sometimes <laughs> to carry, because you have two in the back and two in the front, or sometimes they put on their shoulders, and they would just carry this one person who <laughs> really thought they couldn't walk. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Maybe we need to get this for you next time. There's it's stairs. Probably, probably would be me though. These violins give meaning to like when someone gets, tell, tells you their sob story and you're like, wow, I'm playing the tiniest violin right now. Take it out my purse and just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're so small. There's also some fantastic vintage shopping in the old town. I stumbled upon this shop in which everything is 10 and 20 euros. So some really good deals in this shop. Then I found this vintage store that had a lot of high-end designer vintage that that was a little out of budget for me, but one can dream. So whether or not you're looking for a bargain or some really great uh, vintage designer, you'll find some awesome things tucked away in the old town. All of those shops and the museum were all on this particular street, just for your information. As we wandered along, we stumbled into the Cathedral of Nice, and it was so fun to see a cathedral actually in use in Europe. It seemed like a choir was rehearsing for a Christmas program while we were there, and they had this beautiful big nativity display set up. Also in the old town, the Église Saint-Jacques le Major, which is an old Baroque style church that has a secret bar in its interior courtyard called the Equinox Bar. It's only open from spring equinox to the autumn equinox, so it was closed when we were there. But if you're there in the spring, summer, and early fall, definitely check it out. We decided to go grab a cozy little holiday cocktail at this hobo bar, which was just down the way from the previous church. It was so festive and decorated, so cozy for Christmas, and they had really festive cocktails like this Bailey's coffee, which was basically a dessert and a cocktail in one. Now, how to drink it. <laughs> All right, you guys did such a great job. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Drink it and put foot cream all over your what nose. Is, this? is it all like over a... my nose? <laughs> After we sufficiently warmed up with our Bailey's coffees, we walked over to the Christmas market, and wow, wasn't Plus Masana just completely all decked out and lit up for Christmas? So we've just been walking around the old town exploring and uh, came over to the uh, Jardin du Albert, I believe, uh, to see the Christmas market. This one is the best one we've seen so far on our cruise. It's really big and very, very Christmas to see. like senton things. This is like a traditional thing that people in this area make. They're like little figurines that are made out of clay. So you'll find that a lot in like the the French Christmas markets. Wow, that's something. I was definitely blown away by the Christmas themed carnival rides that they had here. So Christmas markets are like carnivals. If you're American, this is cool. The other thing that is a must do at any Christmas market is eat and drink all the things. They had so many different 
booths where they had all this different yummy food. They had this really cool champagne bar that looked like it was in kind of like an igloo. Lots of games for kids to play. They even had a house with Santa, some really yummy sandwiches and all kinds of just incredible looking desserts. I couldn't pick just one, but those churros definitely had my name on it. But since it was a chilly night, we absolutely had to go and get ourselves some hot mulled wine and some hot apple cider. Now this is Christmas Eve. Feeling very in the Christmas spirit now. On our second morning in Nice, we woke up bright and early and found ourselves on the Promenade Anglaise once again, strolling along the coastline to see more of this beautiful city. Although Nice and the French Riviera in general is known as a sort of summer destination, Nice specifically has been a winter destination for Europeans for many years because the weather was so mild here. Our first order of business was to climb to the top of Castle Hill, but you actually don't have to climb up there if you don't want to. There is a free elevator right around the corner from the staircase, which will take you up there a little bit easier than all the steps, just in case you're a little bit tired from walking around everywhere. This actually used to be a beautiful castle, but was accidentally destroyed in one of the battles here when a cannonball was lobbed over the walls and it hit the munitions room that basically made a huge explosion that caused this castle to be destroyed. If you happen to visit at noon, you can watch a 150 year tradition where a pyrotechnist sets off a firework. According to local legend, this began in 1861 by a Scottish man, Thomas Coventry Moore. No relation to me, I don't think who had retired to Nice with his wife, who was always late to come home to make him lunch. He gained permission to fire off a small cannon at noon daily to remind his wife to come home and make him lunch, or so the story goes. Good mornings. We had a little bit of a slow start, a little bit tired, just decided to take a little walk around the coast and come up to Castle Hill as our first stop today. This is a really beautiful little park and you can get an incredible view of all of Nice below you and of course of the ocean. So definitely worth the trip up here because the views are really, really incredible. I can see from here the Christmas market that we are at, a couple of the churches that we hit yesterday. So that's really cool to see, but it's a little chilly, but the sun looks like it's gonna come out today. So I'm really excited to have a really pleasant, gorgeous second day here in Nice. I'm not gonna lie, this elevator is really nice because, you know, I'd be a little tired today. And um, it's also free, which is a plus too. And it runs automatically. Don't have to touch anything. Blah! I found it really interesting to see how many memorials there are to World War I all throughout Nice, including this little area for Woodrow Wilson. We walked down the Promenade Anglaise and came to Corsalea, which is the flower market in Nice. On Tuesday through Sunday, you'll find booths selling fresh flowers, produce, spices, and other different fresh goods. And on Mondays, this becomes a flea market where you can buy antiques and other little odds and ends.
heard from some of our friends from the cruise that this cafe, bar, Barbicane, which is right off the course Salea, has such incredible pan au chocolat. So of course I had to come get some espresso and try it out for myself. You guys have to try this. It's really good. It's like so crunchy and buttery and flaky, but soft on the inside. If you're in Corsalea, you might want to go check out the Nice Opera House, which is very beautiful, or you can go to the Photography Museum, which again is one of Nice's many incredible museums, and they had this exhibit, which featured a photographer who specialized in wildlife and landscape photography. His photos were absolutely unreal. The real exhibit is for Charles Negre, though, who was a photographer who was very influential in France, and his work seems to center around the early to mid 1900s. I really loved looking at his work. He just seems to capture a sort of true essence of people's everyday lives in such an interesting and captivating way. For lunch, we popped into this charming little Italian restaurant, and it's no surprise that you can find some delicious Italian food here in Nice because there is such a heavy Italian influence here since Nice actually used to be part of Italy, technically, up until the year 1860. That is a big pizza. Very big pizza. After my pan au chocolat, though, I decided to keep it light and local with a Niçois salad. One thing you'll find unique to the pieces in Nietzsche is it's not sand, it's a bunch of large pebbles and rocks. So if you come, you can take a nice sunbathe on the rocks in the sun. The beach actually felt pretty nice despite the fact that it was the middle of December. We are here back in our cabin on the Windstar Star Legend. We had a fantastic couple days here in Nice. I'm very proud of myself because I did a little bit of practicing of my French the last couple weeks before the trip and I communicated with people in French quite a bit on this trip. So go me, next Marseille. So I'll have to keep practicing my skills there. I wanted to go to the Jardin and Villa uh, de Rothschild, I believe is how you say it, which actually isn't too far away. Um, it's about a 20 minute cab ride or 30 to 50 minutes on public transportation depending on where you are in Nice. That looks super beautiful. Unfortunately, we just decided to play it safe today and not push it time-wise before the ship leaves. Um, but if you are here in Nice, that is another really cool thing that you can go check out, as well as there's some really fun tours that will take you over to Monaco for the day. Um, I will link some of my favorites that I found online for that that are affordable down in the description box if you're interested. And that's it. Signing off until the next port. I'll see you all in Marseille. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more fun travel content. Give this video a thumbs up. Maybe check out our previous port vlog in Livorno if you're interested. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.